So in this video, I'm going to take you through the specific functions that La Remote has when connected to an ST2 Pro. Uh, so let's dive right in. Here I've got the unit itself connected to an ST2 Pro, and I'm on the monitoring page, which is sort of the main page where you would do most of your day-to-day -day stuff, you know, turning the volume up and down, maybe dimming the speakers for a moment. Uh, or switching the input, which is something uh, you might need to do often. Right now, I have two inputs configured on this unit. One is for my DAW, the other is for a video editor. But let's say I wanted to add a third input source uh, to the Trinoff. This is how I would do it. So I would go to the setup page here on the GUI and on the sources tab, I'm gonna hit add. Now, as soon as I did that, here on the uh, La Remote, Source 3 has already popped up. It's already available. So that's kind of instantaneous. Now I'm going to rename it here. And let's call it DVD. And now you can see the name is reflected on La Remote. So I can easily switch between now three different input sources very quickly just by setting it up like that. On this page also, we have DIM for the speakers. Uh, and we also have the reference level. So if I hit reference level, you can predetermine what your reference level is for your particular unit. In this case, it's zero dB. Um, if I wanna just hop to that reference point, I can do that really quickly. We've got the input sources. Of course, your mute switch is dedicated, never changes function. And the volume knob is also dedicated, never changes the function. So let's go on to the next screen. Um, here I've got my uh, DAW running, so there's some signal level to see. This is the input meters for that particular source. So if I were to switch sources um, back on this page to the video editor, there's nothing going on there, so we don't see any input meters. All right, back to the DAW, we see some input meters. I go to the output meters, and you can see that reflects the change in volume, depending on how little or loud I have it set to. Then we go on to the speaker solo mute. So here I can mute the individual speakers in my setup. And here, if you look on the uh, GUI, I mute the right, mute the left, or I'm sorry, I'm in solo mode right now. I can switch it to mute mode using the momentary switch. And now I can mute each individual speaker. Very simple. Then we go on to the presets page. So if I had multiple presets in this unit, I would see them listed here on the left side and I could switch in between them depending on the function uh, of the unit at that point in time. You know, sometimes people have a different setup for recording versus mixing, that sort of thing. So that makes it easy to switch between presets. Then we go to the network page. And here, uh, this is very helpful when you're initially setting up your trend off. You can quickly see what IP address it is assigned to, so that makes it easier to get into the GUI. Um, of course, we can switch between static and DHCP settings if necessary, and all that's accessible real easy from the network page. Uh, clock settings, if you're working in different formats, let's say CD material at 44.1 and then back to video at 48K or whatever, you can easily switch your clock settings here on the, on the clock setting page. Then we get to the optimizer page. And so let me, let me go to the optimizer settings in the GUI and you can see this. So should I need to bypass any component of the trend off optimization, I can do that very quickly on the optimizer page. There's the acoustic correction, there's level correction and delay alignment. Also, uh, in some cases due to latency, you might need to bypass the trend off unit itself uh, to perform certain functions. And you can do that here with the momentary switch uh, that bypasses the entire unit. And you can see now our in-out delay is down to one sample. Whereas normally it's only 23 milliseconds, but you know, in certain cases you might need to bypass the unit to avoid that uh, latency. Uh, so after the optimizer, we're back to the monitoring page, uh, which I showed you first. And that has run through all the functionality that you have with La Remote and the ST2 Pro. So now I want to show you a few more settings that control the actual hardware unit itself of La Remote. And we access this by double tapping the rotary select knob. So if I double tap it here, now I'm editing actual um, parameters inside La Remote. And to begin with, we have the volume sensitivity. So the volume knob on La Remote is a detented controller. So for each increment of the controller, you can control how many decibels that equates to in a volume change. 
So right now it's 2 dB per step. So if I move the controller, you can see it's moving 2 dB per click. Now I can reduce that number down to as low as a half decibel per click or crank it all the way up to 6 dB per step for a big swing in volume. I like it down at 2 dB, so let me bring it back there. And now to switch to the next parameter, we just simply press the select knob again. And now we're on to the volume acceleration page. This is a unique feature of La Remote. If we turn on volume acceleration, make that true, then the faster I spin the volume knob, the more it's going to go up and down in volume. See, I can get a great deal of volume change by spinning the knob quickly. If I turn the knob slowly, we're getting roughly that 2 dB per increment. But if I spin it quickly, it moves much faster. So I'm going to turn that back off. And now let's go to the next page. Here we've got the reference level. Now, as I showed you before, um, on the monitoring page, there's a reference level um, button, which will snap the volume to a predetermined reference level. In this case, I've set it to minus 15 dB. We're, let's say we're down at minus 26. If I hit reference level, we jump to minus 15 dB. Now, in your studio, it might be a different decibel level, and you can adjust that here. Let's say we could make it uh, minus 10 dB. Now, if I hit reference level again, it'll snap to minus 10 dB. So that's a quick and easy way to jump to a calibrated level for your studio. All right, on to the next parameter, <coughs> sources only. So if we set sources only to true, we will eliminate several of the pages of control that uh, La Remote will have with the ST2. And that's really to just avoid any unnecessary settings that you don't want anybody to get into, or you just want to simply have them out of your way. You can simply set it to sources only, and it will reduce the number of pages you can access in the ST2. <clears throat> On to the next page. Here we can control how much the backlight is on the screen, turning it all the way off if you'd like, um, or back up here to 100%. Then on the next page, we can invert the color of the screen. So if you want a uh, light text on dark background, we can set this to true and it inverts the uh, pixels. So depending on the lighting in your studio, one method might work better than the other. Okay. On the next page, we can adjust how bright the buttons are, including turning them all the way off. We have them normally here about 50%. Okay, and then we're back to the volume sensitivity. So now we've covered all of the possible settings of the hardware unit itself, and we've covered all of the uh, controls that La Remote has over the ST2 Pro. Uh, so this is a wonderful addition to the turn-off system. Now you can bring all of that functionality right to your fingertips, which should improve your uh, workflow and efficiency. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.